God is good? Even when you're not. Think about that. God is good irrespective of how you act, whether you act stupid, you act ignorant, you act crazy, you act up, or you just don't act at all. He is in love. You know what? I always tell people, we teach on marriage a lot in Kenya, and, you know, and, and uh, Pat has a course that she's written on that, and, and uh, I always tell everybody, you know what? I don't just love my wife. I am in love with my wife. Jesus doesn't just love you. He's in love with you. That means it's active, it's ongoing, and it's forever. It's active, it's ongoing, and it's forever. And when I try to think back to the day we got married... I had came out of Vietnam, and I came back, and three days later, we, we got married, and three days later, I went back there. It was kind of a whirlwind. She thought she had just shacked up with this guy, you know, and I just whatever, and left. That was almost 48 years ago. And you know what? I thought I loved her then. When you got born again, you got this overwhelming desire to be close to Jesus because you discovered he actually loved you right where you were. The mess that we were all in. I don't care. Some messes are bigger messes than other messes, but you know what? We were all in a mess. That's why we had to have Jesus. And I can tell you when we teach in Kenya and there are so many people there that they know about God, they've heard about God, they go to church but they are afraid. They're hiding behind the tree because God might see them and get me. They don't know that God loves them. And because of you and others like you, our family, we're able to be there and share that good news that Jesus Christ is in love with them. It's an awesome thing. We're going to share a few things with you today. Pat, I'm going to have Pat come up just for a second. She has something to share. And, and I'll tell you a few things about what's happening in Kenya uh, with Heart of God Kenya there, uh, the church, the schools, the children. And, and then we'll get into the word. I've got a message for you today. I believe God does. So. Good, morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Family. Wow. We go so eat the mic. We, eat the mic. We we are the original church hoppers. We go from church to church to church, and we don't get in trouble. Rarely <laughs> are we in a different uh, in the same church two weeks in a row. That we I just like to report back to you that the church in America is healthy and. On fire for Jesus. There are churches. We, that are, I know, on the TV and the radio, we hear garbage, and it's probably true, but the people of God are together. The people of God are are praying. The people of God are standing up and saying no to the enemy. So be encouraged. Mike talked, he mentioned briefly that I teach a covenant, I mean, I teach a, a marriage course on, on just how to have a Christian home. And the first statement I make is the marriage is a covenant. It's not a contract. It's a covenant. Amen. And it's a lifetime covenant. It's not based on circumstances. It's based on God. And when we have children off the street that have never had anybody committed to them, some of them have been rebellious and have left home. 
Many of them have been kicked out because either they were a problem or they were too much to feed. Some at four and five years old, they kick or as low as young as three sometimes, they put them out on the street. We, we had Laban, is, how old is Laban, 19 now? 20. 20. That years ago, like in five. 2000. He was five, six years old. Eight, 2007, know. Mike was down looking for one of the runaways. And, uh, and he came across a little boy in a gunny sack on the Where sidewalk. He stuck his little and hand out, and I was looking, opening them all, looking at 3 o'clock in the morning because I know where they hide. I was looking, and he stuck his hand out, and I said, do you want to come home with me? And he came home, and he's still home. He's, uh, uh, he will be a senior in high school. He's Starting in January, he'll start a senior year of high school. <laughs> He's a great kid, and he's there because of you, because of your prayer. He wants to be a chef. Because of your commitment, because <laughs> of your covenant with God that you have not forsaken the people that you, you don't know. You don't know Laban. If he walked in the room right now, he would think he's kind of dressed kind of weird because he likes to just be weird. Like... I, uh, I saw him in shorts and one of Papa's shirts. And now I mean, you know, gigantic hair on him and a funny hat, but that's Laban. But he loves Jesus and yes, he's he alive and well because of you. And I thank you. I thank you for all the kids because when they come into our home, we make a covenant. Not with them, but with God, that we will keep them, we will raise them, we will feed them. You know, in 2004, when we got three thousand dollars in in offerings, we were feeding eight or nine kids. It was tough, but God is faithful and. And, and those days are days of, of the past. We don't worry about feeding. I actually, I don't worry about money anymore, which is a hallelujah. I don't stay awake thinking, oh, my word. Because I know God is faithful. And that's a message that God wants me to tell somebody in this room needs to know that God is faithful. He keeps his promises. He keeps his covenants. Amen. And he loves you so much. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for standing with us. Thank you for being there for my kids, for our kids here. Our grandbabies over we there. We love you. Hi, Juju. Hey, Juju. Hi, baby girl. Hey, baby. <laughs> <laughs> it's Kate uh, asleep. Yeah, Kate's asleep. So, uh, Grandpa. Grandma here. Uh, turn that thing off. Play with that thing. Uh, first off, before we get into the word, I want to share a little a short video with you. Uh, this took place on September 7th. We have Bible colleges, we have 27, a couple more coming online again. When they graduate, we replace them at 27 right now across the nation of Kenya. And uh, we had a graduation at our compound on September 7th. We had 80 graduates, we're up to almost 1,300 graduates now. That means churches all over the country, you know, uh, teaching grace, message, and it's all because of you. It's because of Jesus, but it's because of your support and your prayers that it's happening, that, it, that the message is getting out to the people, that God loves them, and there's nothing they can do about it. So we had about 2,500 people come to celebrate this graduation that day. We, have, uh, we invite the government officials. Uh, we did have one of the local MPs, as members of parliament, was, which is like a U.S. congressman. He came, and he spoke a little bit. We always have them speak, and we always pray over them 
forget their politics, forget all of that stuff. We pray over them that they would hear God, you know, and all. This guy is a staunch Muslim. When he got through hearing the message, they, sometimes they usually don't stay either. They usually, oh, I've got to go do this, you know, and they take off. He stayed, and he heard the message, and he came up to our directors afterwards, and he told them, he says, I've never heard anybody explain your God that way before. And he has interest, and they are talking with him, and he goes to a mosque in a Muslim town about 35 miles from us where they're training young people to go with al-Shabaab, with ISIS, and they're training them in there, radicalizing them. And this guy happens to attend that mosque. And we are continuing to reach the Muslim people. But now, a government official who has authority in the nation of Kenya to make laws is about to meet Jesus. Amen. And it's because of you. That is my heart. I, I, I want to reach the kids. I want to reach everybody. But I have a very strong, strong desire to wake up people who think Muhammad's somebody. And we are doing that. We are within 24 miles of where ISIS is hiding in the forest and chasing people around with one of our Bible schools and churches. And uh, we're not moving. They're going to move. They're either going to come to Jesus or they're going to go some other place. Because I like, my favorite thing is to kick the devil's butt. Okay? And that's what we're doing. That's what you are enabling us to do. I wanted you to know that. So let's watch this video. Again, uh, it shows some of our kids in it. It shows the crowd. It's in our compound. Come on, everybody. One of our boys is singing are, it. He wrote the song. We are a chosen generation. Call for the show. He's excellent. All I require, all I require for life, God has given me, and I know who I am. We are a chosen, we are a chosen generation. Come on, come on the show. God loves you, and we love you, and why you That's right next to our house. This is John, one of our boys. Talking about the Holy Ghost. Prince J. Only you, 
That is a miracle, that place that you see there. Pat and I, have, we moved in there April 1st of 2005 into that house. That's a miracle. We've moved 29 times, and we've lived in that house since then. That's a miracle for me. Because I moved Pat all over the world many, many times. And I always have an itch to go, but I've been listening to God for a while. So, uh, praise God. I hope you enjoyed that just to see it just a little bit of what you're doing there. That's your family. They consider you part of their family. They do. They really do. And they greet you in Jesus' name. We have had verifiable... You know, we have a lot of people that will come up over and over again to get saved, whatever, but... I know for verified, I just recently verified 900 uh, uh, people that got saved this last, up to now, this, since January. 900 people. <clears throat> and that does, that's just the reports I get. I don't know what goes on in all of those churches out there that are preaching the message that have graduated from our school and, and that we always say I don't, I don't get all the reports, but um, that's what's happening there. Jesus is alive and well. Amen. Uh, I just heard that last night, um, four terrorists walked into a hotel in Nairobi and shot 21, killed 21 people. And thank God there was a British soldier that happened to be there. And they weren't carrying guns, but he picked up theirs and killed two of them, those terrorists. And uh, there was one British citizen. Praise God there wasn't any Americans this time. But you continue to pray. It is a part of the world where the enemy, the church is alive and well in Kenya. It is. It's growing. But the enemy comes in like a flood to try to drown us. The truth is, we come in, the Holy Ghost comes in like a flood and drowns him. God is good all the time. And it isn't dependent on me. Thank God for that. You ask my kids in Kenya. They thank God it isn't dependent on me. They have had the five-fold ministry a few times. You know, the, 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 some of those kids from the street can get pretty, uh, well, they found out this old man's not as old as they think. Okay, so. Let's hold up our Bibles. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do, I will do, what it says I will do. Today we'll be taught the Word of God. I boldly confess. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I'll never, ever be the same. Never, never, never. Never be, Never be the same. In Jesus' name. Psalms 119, verse 89. It says there that forever, O Lord, your word is settled in heaven. If Jesus is inside of you, heaven's in you, is it settled? Is his word settled in you? Your spirit says it is. But your flesh struggles to settle that word. Doesn't he? it? Your flesh struggles to believe. Your flesh struggles with circumstances. All right? Jesus said, I think it's in John chapter 10, somewhere around verse 27, talking about uh, uh, that Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice, and they follow me, I believe. Yeah, John 10, 27. You know something interesting about sheep? 
Now, people think sheep are dumb. They're really not. Not at all. We have some interesting stories about one of the churches we have. In fact, we're, we're, we're wanting to, uh, to put it well up there and stuff, but we got to make sure that somebody doesn't come and fill it in and kill the other people to get it and all these things, but we're working on that. But some people that are in a really remote area where there is no water, and we were down a half mile down the hill from the building we have church in, and the guy, one of our guys goes to church there was the shepherd, and he just starts singing this little bitty soft. There's only one water hole about this big around there for 50 square miles. They, there's just, and, you know, they walk. They don't, and so they have to come long ways if they get any water. And he's down there, and he's singing this soft song. And Pat's hearing him, and it was amazing. All of a sudden, a couple hundred sheep came running down that hill as fast as they could because they heard the shepherd's voice. And, I mean, he was very softly singing it. But they recognized his voice. The interesting thing about a sheep is we're the sheep, right? Jesus compared to sheep don't have to know where they're going. What do they have to do? They have to know the shepherd's voice. They have to follow him. It doesn't matter if they don't know where they're going. It doesn't matter if you don't know for sure where you're going. What you need to do is hear the shepherd's voice. Okay? That's what we need to do. The problem today is we speak, you know, God says we can have what we say, but the problem is we're saying what we see, not what God says. Am I right? Yes. Do you hear me? Are you here today? Yes. Start speaking the word because the word will never fail, has never failed. Does your word fail? <laughs> but God's word doesn't. In fact, it's already settled. All right? It's already settled. What are you concerned about today most? What are you concerned about? You know, Psalms 138, 8, I think, says God's concerned about what concerns you. But you know what he's really concerned about? You know what Jesus is mostly concerned about? Is you trusting in him. Trusting in him. In him. You know, the, the children, when they come to this, we have, we had just taken some more children in the last couple months. Pat and I, I we're so busy, we travel so much because we have 27 churches out there and we had 31 schools and right now it's down a little bit, they'll be back up again. So we continually, in fact, when we get back in March, we're going back March 2nd, we're going to be here to stay a little while to see the new granddaughter come into the world here. Yeah. And uh, then we're going back. We already buy our ticket. By the way, uh, I got a ticket for $610 round trip for each of us. Wow. If some of you'd like to come to Kenya, it's, uh, I can find you some nice $610 round trip out of Kansas City. Wow. Right up the airport, land in Nairobi and come back for that price. That's a pretty good price. <laughs> hint, hint. <laughs> so um, our children sometimes, you know, they... It's hard for them to learn to trust. The kids we have now, most of them have settled. Uh, we've got some new ones. The one little girl that just came kept coming to Pat and said, Mama, now I have a mama. They're, her parents are dead. And, and her grandmother, they kicked her out. They kicked the two children out, so what she showed up to our house. And uh, she's a drunk, and she beat them, and she had them. They hid, and they slept in a toilet, literally, an outdoor toilet. They have, there's an outdoor toilet, you know, where the hole is, and then next to it they have a one that they take their showers in, which is right next to that hole, and they have a little wall sometimes, sometimes they don't. Anyway, they're sleeping in that little spot in there, these two little girls. And they came, uh, so we're sitting in our room one night, and for the last couple of years God's been dealing with me about, you know, you're saying you're not going to take anymore, but mm, can I talk to you about that? And I said, no, no, come on, God, you know, we're busy and, you know, 70's coming up soon. I'm not 
young, getting any younger, and you know, and I'm thinking, <laughs> listen, how many of you have been in the military in here? Some of you have been in the military. You ever had an AK pointed at you? I have. I was less scared having an AK pointed at me than I was about babies. <laughs> she wanted six, I wanted zero, and praise God we have that beautiful woman over there, Tiona, who's still my baby girl, whether she likes it or not, she's still my baby girl. 37 years old, but she's still my baby girl. And I, now, you know what, I got a whole bunch of baby girls in Kenya. <laughs> and I even now have another eight-year-old that came. And her sister that was 13. So we're, I talked to Pat and I said, you know, because we had agreed, okay, we're not going to take any more. We're traveling, traveling, traveling. And uh, I said, God's telling me we need to take some more. And I explained to her, you know, what, what I've been feeling and saying. And uh, so I said, yes, God, yes. Less than 12 hours later, God sent more children. They came in our gate. I'm coming down from our upper compound where we have the schools and our office down to our house and I'm walking through the gate and right behind me I hear this little voice hello sir barely hello sir she was so scared so dirty so helpless looking these two little girls and usually I you have to really I, I have a strong uh, I operate strongly in the gift of discerning of spirits, and, and you need that where we are and what we do. And, and usually I look at him, okay, God, you know what it is, the Holy Spirit. I didn't have to do anything. I had already said yes to God. God sent who he knew belonged there, and I knew it. I turned around as soon as I saw her. Usually I'd think, okay, and I'll go get, if it's girls, I'll take her over to our there are people that work for us, the girls, because most of these kids can't speak English yet by that time. And so they'll talk with them, pat come, whatever, do whatever. Well, I didn't. I just, they were all, our kids were down, and everybody was down the hill getting water from the river because the water was off again. So we go down there and get buckets to bring water up. And uh, it's about a mile and a half down this hill. And uh, I knew. Holy Ghost, these are your kids. They belong here. Name is Christina Kendi, the eight year old, and Consolata is the one that now turned 14. And she is the one who says, Mama, and she's crying her eyes out even the day we were leaving. She was hiding. She didn't want to see us leave to go to the airport because she thought we wouldn't come back. We've had that happen before, but then I know our other kids there are showing, we've talked to them sometimes, and, and now she hasn't talked much to us, but I think she's seeing that it's okay. You know, we have a family there. We miss them when we're here. That's where God has placed us. If you are told to go somewhere by God, the place he tells you to go is the safest place in the world. I don't care what the political situation is. I don't care what there's a war going on. I don't care where it is. If God said for you to be there at that moment and to be there and do this and do this, it's the safest place in the world when you say yes for you. So you need to know that. I don't care what you, maybe you don't hear a lot of stuff about, you know, there's terrorists, there's Muslims, there's all that stuff running around Kenya and all that stuff because they hide there because they can. Do not be worried about us. Pray that we listen to God and do what he says when he says, and we'll be fine. Okay? It is good to pray for that. Okay, You don't need to pray for safety. People always want to pray that, and that sounds nice. No, pray that we listen to God and that we hear his voice. Psalms 85, verse 8, I will hear what the Lord will say. Do that, and you're okay. As long as you act what he says. Okay? So I want to get into, just for briefly here, not too long. I won't keep you long. Um, in Kenya... When I start speaking, it's usually eight hours before I stop. <laughs> Literally. We teach, Pat teaches, I teach, 
We travel around, we go to churches, we do all that. When we're teaching, we're teaching eight hours a day. So, you know, Pastor Bob uh, may be over there, but if I was to do that, he'd probably reach his arm out there and uh, the fivefold ministry would take care of me. <laughs> so, uh, no, that probably would. And my wife would already, in fact, she would leave. So, um, she'll usually start going, Rrr. so I'm trying to learn to cut things down here. So, I will be out of here in the next 25 minutes, okay? <laughs> That's a miracle. You're witnessing a miracle here. Okay. Proverbs 3, 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your understanding. Over in uh, the book of Psalms, some, uh, I think chapter 54 or 5 or something, talks about we cry out to God in distress. You know, David was always crying out and all that and praying and learning what to do. Um, with what God, uh, what's happening in his, in his life. And so I want you to turn over to chapter 4 of the book of Mark. And we're going to go between verse 35 and 41 here. And uh, I have been meditating this for quite a while. There's so many different aspects of this. Uh, I'm a person that likes detail, and I just try to get everything and there is I can find out of something and uh, I can teach about leadership out of this I can teach about transition in leadership out of this I can teach about fear out of there's so many things here and I believe God has something for you here today um, uh, out of this today so uh, if you turn to Mark chapter 4 verse 35 this is Jesus teaching the multitude and he's teaching and teaching and teaching and teaching. And he's, there's a boat there. They're at the sea. And at the, uh, and, and, uh, sea of Galilee. And he, he gets into a boat to get separated a little bit from them. Because of, the people are thronging him. You know, they're trying to get around and trying to get close to him. You know, and he wanted to be able to sit there and, and to be able to, t to teach them. And so he's teaching them. And it's all day long he's teaching. And I can't even imagine how he ever was able to... I mean, that had to be miracles that we never hear about what miracle was happening there. But when he spoke, all these people heard him, and there's 5,000 or 10,000 or 15,000 people, and he had no microphone. There must have been some miracles going on right there, okay, for them to hear. All right? And so uh, he gets to where it's towards the end of the day, and he comes to his disciples. And here in uh, verse 35... He says, on the same day, when evening had come, the same day as he had been teaching, he said to them, let us cross over to the other side. So here they are. They're at the, the, the river bank, or not the river, at the, the Sea of Galilee. They're, 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 at, the, they're at the banks of the, 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 the lake there. And he's saying, let's go to the other side. So I'm assuming, you know, he's going to go to the other side. So they're in Israel, and there's several things here. They're in Israel, and what's on the other side? Capernaum, where he's going. Where, what's on the other side? Where is that city? Geography. It's in Syria, modern-day Syria, okay? What does Syria conjure up in your mind? The enemy. Uh, oh, a bad play, all of that thing. And then they're telling, he's telling, let's get in the boat and let's go to the other side, okay? So they already got this in their mind, maybe, and it's late in the evening. These guys are professional fishermen, you know, and so they know because if you, uh, I hear what, from what I've read, I haven't been there yet, but I'm going to go there. Maybe for our 50th in a couple of years, we'll go see Israel. But uh, they, they, the winds come a lot through there, and so, so there's a lot of strong wind probably in the evenings out there on that lake. And so that wasn't the best time to cross that lake, yet he said to do it. He said, let us go. If you look over in the book of Matthew, chapter 8, I think it's around verse 18, it says the same story, only it doesn't say, let us go. He, comma he says, he commanded them to go. Much of the time, when God says something to do, and you're, he's saying like this, let us you're thinking, let you go, God. <laughs> you go fix it, God. You go take care of it, and then, uh, then I'll come along behind you here. 
All right, yeah, Daddy, yeah, you go take care of it, and then I'll show up. No, he commanded. There, there are so many times in the Bible God is commanding to us to do something. Commands are, I'm a man who knows how to work under authority, and I know how to give authority, okay? And I can tell you that sometimes when you're under authority, you don't want to do what the one in authority is telling you to do. Jesus can tell you some things that you don't want to do. I didn't want to have children. I didn't want to do it. I was scared to death of them. They just... <laughs> and now I've had so many, I don't even know how many. And praise God for it. But, so, if he commands you to do something, is that pretty strong words? You know what we do? When we hear, I, if we hear, I command you, unless you're in the military, you're thinking, that's a cuss word. He's cussing me, <laughs> telling me what to do. Who knows better? The one who made you in the universe or you? And if you answer you, then we, we probably need, you, you need to get up and have a discussion with some of these people. Okay? So... He tells them to go to the other side. It says in verse 36 it says, when they left the multitude, now hear this, they took him, it says here, they took him along in the boat. Now, now I know that God wrote this through a man and was inspired, but it almost sounds to me like what we would say, yeah, he told him, but yeah. We took him like, like, like they did it. We took him along. You come along with us, God, right? God tells you to do something. I've been guilty of this. I'm a person who likes to go, and I get out, and I'll turn. God says to do something, and so I take about step four before I'm supposed to. You know, he told me one, and I'm taking two and three and four, and I turn around. Come on, God. Come on. C yeah. Come on, God. You said. Uh, you know, and he's still over here, and you got to know his voice, and you got to follow it his way. But here they wrote, they took him along in the boat. But it says here, as he was. Now, there's commentaries that say here that that's talking about he was tired. You know, he still had a, he was a still a holy man, holy God, but also man. His body could get tired, and that's probably true. You know, you can teach you know, we don't get until we shut up once we speak the word all day long. When we stop, sometimes we're a, uh, well, not usually me. I still want to talk. She, she just, uh. But as he was. In 1 John 4, 17, it says, as he is, so are you, so am I in this world. In Kenya, we say sasa, sai, immediately, right now. We are as he is. They had been with Jesus. They heard him speak. They saw the miracles he did. And if you read the miracles that he had done right before this and the ones he does right after this in this chapter and the next, and all of how it was tucked together, it's amazing they would always forget about the last one they did just a few minutes or a day before. And they go, oh no, what are we going to do? And it says, and other little boats were also with him. That means there were other people who didn't uh, like it that he was leaving. They wanted more. Some of them may have not been for the right reason. Maybe they thought they were going to get something, you know. When we go, many places were the tourist attraction, and they see white people. They see, oh, and they're Americans, money. And immediately they're asking and begging for money. And listen, when you and I in this country say, oh, I don't have any money, you're lying. You have something, you have ways to do something with, about it. Whether in Kenya, when they say they don't have any, they do not have any. I mean, we get people all the time, mamas come to us and are locked out of their little houses, which is a little mud hut room five dollars a month and they can't pay it they can't pay it and they'll starve 
and they come to us. As he is, so are you now in the spirit, not your flesh. That's why we have to have our minds renewed. And he goes on here, and he says, as they were going, God told you to go somewhere, right? And so you expect, we always expect, well, it's always going to be great. It's going to work out perfectly. Everything's going to be just all right, and we're not going to have any problems, right? Is that the way it usually works? Huh. Why is that? It's not because of God. It's because we have an enemy. We have an enemy, and it says here, a great windstorm arose in verse 37, and the waves beat into the boat so that it was already filling. It was already filling. So that means they can drown. They went out in the, if they'd went out in the middle of the day, it might have been calm. No, Jesus said, no, it's time to go now. Don't always look, don't, don't, Look at what Jesus said, hear his voice, and go and do what he says to do when he says to do it, and don't look at what time of day it is or what circumstance you see. Just do it, okay? And so they went, and it says the boat was filling up. Verse 38, Jesus was asleep. Jesus was tired. He, he went to sleep. Sometimes... Have you ever thought that God's been asleep when you had your problem? Yeah. What it says here, it says, and they awoke him and said to him, teacher, it's interesting here, they say teacher, they don't say master, they don't say Lord, they're not, it isn't they're not trying to give him honor, but they're not quite sure here is he really who it looks like he is? Is he really God? Is he really the Messiah? Okay? Is he really somebody that we should call Lord? Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? What does that say about them? Well, right after that, the verse says, where is your faith? Like, it's gone. It's exited. It was it there ever. You know, Romans 12, too, we're supposed to renew our minds. And you could, some of them may have even been thinking, oh, this can't be God. This guy's asleep over here. But then what happens? Let's look at this quickly here. I'm working on, I'm going to get done with nine minutes. I'll be done here. And I'm pretty big, so if I go past that, you might have a try to stop me. But Okay, so. He arose. What did he do? What would you do if somebody comes up to you and says, What's wrong with you? Don't you see what's happening? What are you going to say? Leave me alone. <laughs> and he wakes you up. Now, I don't like naps. I don't take naps. I, uh, if I have it, she takes 20 minute power naps. If I take a 20 minute power nap, I'd just be mad. No, 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 no. I don't, I don't like naps. I never liked uh, to stop moving. But Jesus didn't rebuke him. Jesus didn't say, well, you dummy. Haven't you seen what I've been doing? You've been with me all this time, and you are wondering. Didn't I tell you? Remember Gideon? Remember Gideon in the book of Judges? Gideon, God, what did he tell him? He told him what to do, you know, and he kept whittling down the amount of people. And he said, are you sure he said that? And then God says, did I not say? Go and take care of my people. Did not God say whatever it is to you? Remember that in the next time that you are starting to doubt and wondering if what God has said is going to happen. Okay? They doubted. They were in fear. They were afraid. He didn't rebuke them. He just stands up in verse 39. He says, he arose, and he rebuked the wind, and he said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. Not just peace, 
But have you ever been out on uh, the, a lake or you've been on the ocean? Or what? The ocean never calm, but you out on a lake and in the evening maybe or in the early mornings, it's, man, it's great. You can see and you fish out there and you just, it's just as calm and beautiful as can be. Is life that way most of the time? Doesn't seem to be. But it should be because guess what? If you look in here, <laughs> hey, Jesus is in there. He's in here. <laughs> it's peaceful in here. Amen. The problem is what translation between here and it gets to here and what comes out here. Okay? All right? And so he just, what, he calms the whole, he fixes the situation. And so what did they do next? They were all thankful. Oh, praise God. We know who you are. Or, what did they do? They were afraid that they were going to drown. He fixes the problem. He takes care of it. They no longer have to fear. <laughs> They're not going to die. They're not going to drown. It's the, the, they, they have peace, and it's calm. And then they saw him do it, and it says here in verse 40, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And verse 41 says, and they feared exceedingly. What did they fear? They're looking at each other, and what were they fearing? Some of them might be, uh-oh, this really is God. I'm in trouble. because, oh. Or they're thinking this is some kind of spirit, and I don't know what it is. And they're afraid. They're thinking this is the devil. They're thinking, you know, in the Old Testament, when you read the Old Testament, this is something interesting. And I love teaching in the Old Testament. I teach grace out of the Old Testament. I'm going to write a book on that, grace out of the Old Testament, because it's in every book. And uh, you see in the Old Testament, they'll say what God is like. They didn't know God the way we know him. Even the great prophets, they didn't really know him the way we do most of the time. And they, like in the book of Job, people are always quoting, always quoting, don't, don't use this verse. He says, God gives and giveth and God taketh away. That's in the book of Job. That's not God. That's not the God we serve. God doesn't take away. Stupid takes away. Okay? Okay? If that's going to be your theology, get out of the book of Job. There's some great things in the book of Job. There's grace in the book of Job. But the man... He did not understand when they would write about God, all these things that they said God was. They didn't know him. These guys were walking and talking with God the man in the flesh, with them, seeing all these miracles. He fixes the problem so they're okay, and immediately they're afraid. Oh, my gosh, who is this? What is this? He says right here, they feared exceedingly and said to one another, who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey him? And then the next thing happens to doubly cause them fear. They get to the other side where they're going, where he said, let's go. And what happens when they get there? They get to the other side. And when they have come out of the boat in chapter 5, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with the devil with demons. If God's sending you somewhere, guess what? There is going to be spirits there. And you know what? Those spirits don't want you to do what God's called you to do. You ever wonder when you go down the road and you see, you know, liquor store and you see wine? And spirits. <laughs> you know, the Bible says don't be, let wine control you. It doesn't say not drink. But spirits, it does say rightly divide the word, right, and find out what spirits what. That bottle has spirits in it, and it's not God's spirit. I'm not condemning people. You drink whatever you've got. That doesn't stop you from salvation. doesn't anything. You can die a drunk. I've known people who have that couldn't physically 
in their natural get over it, but they were born again, praise God, and we're going to see them in heaven. And that may mess with your theology, but so what? <laughs> God doesn't want you to stay that way. He wants you to be in your right mind, and the right mind is the mind of Christ. The Word says, we have the mind of Christ. We don't have to fear, but we're going to. You don't think I've been afraid in Kenya sometimes? One time when Pat got knocked out and there were seven guys on us trying to take us down, I was not thinking about getting out my Bible and trying to get them saved. I was trying to think, get this thing in order and be the biggest hit in their life to make them see Jesus sooner than later. <laughs> We can have fear, but fear should not stop us. God says throughout his word, be bold, be strong, and courageous. That doesn't mean that you don't have fear. That means act, not react. There's no word react in the Bible. God doesn't react to your stupid. And he doesn't react to your good. He's God all the time. Pat and I praise God for you guys. You know, we don't get the privilege of being here all the time. We miss the family. You know, when we're here and we get to be in praise and worship. And, you, you know, we, there's 54 tribal languages in Kenya. And uh, a lot of times they love to sing and praise God and do all that. And it drives me insane because they know four chords and they're off keys all the time. And I used to lead praise and worship. And I majored in music college and I get <laughs> when they're doing that. We are going to start a, a, a praise and worship school as a part of our Bible colleges there. Um, we are about to embark on building it. So just so you know, uh, my last minute here, uh, we are about to embark on starting uh, to build a building on our compound because we're going to be moving some things around, and we need that building that we're in for some of our kids, and we need to have a building there where we're meeting the church there in that compound. So we're going to put up a building. We're going to have to have five to $8,000. So that's something we're looking to get and, and uh, move forward in that well that we're going to be digging up in this area where they don't speak any language that we do. God, every time we go to that church, every time we go up there, we have to rely on God to interpret because our people don't know their language. And God comes through every time. That's called missionary tongues. And they hear what we're speaking in Swahili not in Messiah. They hear it. I mean, they hear it. We speak in Swahili, and they hear it in Messiah. We, none of our people know how to speak that, and I certainly don't know how to speak Messiah. So we thank you. We praise God for you. Uh, we'll be around. We are tra uh, about to travel out east the day before Thanksgiving. We're headed to Ohio, North Carolina, all the east coast. We'll be out there for a couple weeks, around 17th or so of December. We'll be back until that baby comes. We'll be around the area. And so I know we'll be back with you a few times in church. We thank you for staying and listening today. God's word is true. And remember, forever, forever what? His word is settled and say, in me, in Jesus' name. If you need prayer today, we certainly can be up here. We'll pray for you if you have any needs. God wants you well. If there's anybody here, that doesn't know and have a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Today's your day. The angels of heaven are lining up to celebrate this day for you.